Okay, by now you're pretty much a functions rock star, but we have one more aspect to cover before you can boast about your fame. In this lesson, we'll look at transforming functions. First, we'll start with a short review of what these transformations would look like graphically and algebraically, and then work through an SAT problem together. So let's let our function be f of x equals x cubed. Algebraically, if we substitute x minus 2 in for x, we would get the new function x minus 2 cubed. If we substitute in this way, we would shift the function to the right by 2. Algebraically, substituting x plus 2 in for x, we get the new function x plus 2 cubed. Then f of x plus 2 would shift the function f of x equals x cubed to the left by 2. Algebraically, if we add 2 to the function outside of the parentheses, we just add 2 to the original function to get the new function x cubed plus 2. Since f of x is y, notice that the y values have been increased by 2, which results in shifting the function up by 2. Subtracting 2 from the function outside of the parentheses, we get the new function x cubed minus 2. The y values are then reduced by 2, resulting in shifting the function down by 2. Algebraically, substituting negative x in for x, we would get the new function negative x cubed which has the effect of making every x negative and reflecting or flipping the function over the y-axis. Algebraically substituting negative f of x in for f of x, we would get the new function negative x cubed, which has the effect of making every x negative and reflecting or flipping the function over the x-axis. Now let's look at an example problem involving transformations of functions. If the graph of f of x is pictured as shown, which of the following would be the graph of f of x minus 2? Our answer choices are four different graphs as possibilities with f of x minus 2. We'll underline the facts and circle the key terms. Since the minus 2 is inside the parentheses, we'll be shifting the graph horizontally. And since we're subtracting 2, we'll be moving it to the right by 2. Because this transformation won't shift the graph vertically, we can get rid of the answer choices that move the graph up or down. So we can cross out answer choice A because it moves the graph up, and cross out choice B because it moves the graph down. If we pick a distinctive point on the graph, like this one at 0, 2, it will be moved to the right by 2 in this transformation. So which of the remaining graphs has been shifted to the right by 2? Not choice C, our point was moved to the left by 2. The only answer choice showing the point being moved to the right by 2 is choice D. That's our answer. If we look for a pattern, we'll notice that changes inside of the parentheses affect the x values of the function and shift the function horizontally. Also notice that they have a counterintuitive effect. Subtracting 2 inside the parentheses has the effect of shifting the function to the right by 2 and adding 2 inside the parentheses has the effect of shifting the function to the left by 2. And multiplying the x's by 2 has the effect of shrinking the function horizontally. The changes outside of the parentheses affect the y values and shift the function vertically. Notice that these changes affect the function in the way we would expect. Adding 2 to the function outside of the parentheses shifts the function up by 2. Subtracting 2 to the function outside of the parentheses shifts the function down by 2. And multiplying f of x by 2 has the effect of stretching the function vertically. Translating functions graphically can appear tricky, but it's not as tough as it seems if you just remember these basic rules of transformation. Although we're at the end of this lesson, your work is not done. Try solving some practice problems to solidify your learning and increase your confidence. <laughs>